the next reflection will be shared by Reverend Sahaya G. Salvam, SDB. He's the former Deputy Vice Chancellor of Tangaza University College, Nairobi. Reverend Selham is an Associate Professor of Psychology at the Institute of Youth Studies, Tangasa University College. In line with the charism of his religious order, the Salesians of Don Bosco, Selvam's focus is youth and their education and formation. In 2009, he completed his Master of Arts in Psychology of Religion at Heythrop College, University of London. And in 2012, he obtained a PhD from the same university. His research often employs action research, bordering service learning. Ladies and gentlemen, let's listen to the reflections of Reverend Sahaya Selvam, SDV. Thank you very much, Neil, for your kind words. And uh, so as he said, I come from a, a psychology background and therefore I will be focusing on motivation uh, on my presentation. My starting point comes from Ex Code Ecclesia, which Barbara quoted a lot in her presentation, and I'd like to start from there. It says, the Christian spirit of service to others for the promotion of social justice is of particular importance for each Catholic university to be shared by its teachers and developed in its students. So my focus here is on how we form agents of social transformation from the graduates of the Catholic higher education institutions. So for purposes of this presentation, I would like to start by defining social transformation. Social transformation to me is a set of processes in which individuals and groups of people bring about uh, a large scale uh, social change with an aim of enhancing quality of life in the light of the gospel values. So that is social transformation to me from a Christian perspective. So now the big question is, how can Catholic higher education institutions accompany their students in such a way that their graduates will become agents of social transformation as required by Ex Corde Ecclesia. Uh, so the aim of my presentation is to reflect on the relationship between spirituality and service learning that will motivate learners to become agents of social transformation. What type of spirituality are we talking about? Uh, what type of spirituality is relevant for our discussion? Increasingly today, uh, spirituality gets isolated from religion. In terms of spirituality and religion affiliation, people tend to situate themselves, uh, in my opinion, uh, within one of the four quadrants. In the first quadrant, uh, you see people who belong to what I call, borrowing an expression from another psychologist, Alport, Gordon Alport, uh, extrinsic religiosity. It is marked by an exaggerated religious sentiment towards the four C's of religion, creed, code, cult, and community. Uh, and there may not be much search for meaning of these four C's they just follow these four C's. So that is why it becomes an empty religion. Uh, the second quadrant uh, consists of secularization. People who are low in spirituality or absence of spirituality and absence of religiosity it is characterized by total abandonment of search for meaning in life with no belief in anything transcendental. In the third quadrant, you have people who call themselves spiritual, but not religious. Uh, this is marked by a sincere search for meaning outside the domains of institutionalized religion. They might practice what is called today mindfulness uh, and even be very compassionate. 
Now, in the fourth quadrant, we have religious spirituality that seeks meaningful life and all that surrounds it within the domains of the four C's of religion, creed, code, cult, and community. Now, my own previous research among young people in Africa uh, practicing contemplation showed that um, Christ, uh, those who practice contemplation begin to express a four-dimensional religious spirituality in terms of an intrapersonal dimension. In, uh, they express it in virtuous expressions intrapersonal uh, dimension, inter, uh, transpersonal dimension, interpersonal dimension, and an ecological dimension. Okay, so this is how I define spirituality as the motivating factor to produce agents of social transformation among our graduates. So uh, sticking on with meaning in life, meaning. Now, from a psychological perspective, uh, meaning can have three meanings. The first is sort of a coherence that I find sense of order in the things that exist around me. The second is significance, that things around me make sense. And thirdly, purpose in life that my life has a telos, a goal, uh, 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 something larger than myself. So let me expand that meaning of purpose, which will be connected to spirituality and motivation. Uh, I borrow my definition of purpose from an American psychologist, a contemporary psychologist, William Damon. He defines purpose as a stable and generalized intention to accomplish something that is at the same time meaningful to the self and consequence, consequential for the world beyond the self. In simple words, purpose is a desire to achieve something beyond the self. And so it goes beyond career and a set of goals. Goals can be milestones in my life. To graduate could be a milestone, but a purpose is something that is perennial. And so in the context of our discussion then, how do we accompany learners to build up an intrinsic motivation in such a way that social transformation becomes a part of their purpose in life? And here's where I find spirituality playing an important role in turning in extrinsic religious, uh, extrinsic motivation in terms of graduation marks, uh, grades into intrinsic religiosity that becomes part of my life. And service learning that is distinct from sporadic community service and professional career oriented internship. Uh, it is a service learning is a reciprocal relationship between the learner and the beneficiary in which the learner is accompanied to integrate their learning uh, into their learning, the encounter with the beneficiary by means of reflection. Now, when uh, this reflection becomes contemplation, there is a spiritual dimension to uh, service learning, which will convert their extrinsic motivation into intrinsic motivation. You can see I'm using a lot of psychological terms coming from a psychological perspective, uh, but I, I suppose it makes some sense. As Kotho suggests, service learning might provide an euphoric response to social justice, but it is spirituality that will provide a lifelong commitment to social transformation. Now, in order to achieve this in service learning, there has to be a movement in methodology from reflection, from, uh, from reflection to contemplation, a movement from economic development to holistic well-being, from a focus on a better society to the reign of God as a kingdom of God. So 
here is my conclusion, uh, a summary. The goal of Catholic education, Catholic higher education in this context, is to create competent graduates who will be agents of social transformation. This can be achieved very well uh, through an accompaniment of uh, service learning. And service learning becomes a lifestyle when colored by a deep spirituality. Now, spirituality has the potential to generate intrinsic motivation, which will sustain the graduates to be agents of social transformation. So this is in brief my input in this panel. Thank you very much.